Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub-harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug-and-play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass-through component in case you experience a failure on board here, it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty. So we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. All right, guys, typically we try to get a pristine stock bike for these installations, but it is 2021 at the shoot of this video. And this is a 13 to 18 model. They are getting harder and harder to find in unmodified versions. What you see here is a janky aftermarket taillight, barely bright enough to show any of the functions, but we're gonna make do on this. All we're really showing is the installation of a brake light modulator and not really how great the tail light is. Whether you have one of these tail lights, a better tail light, or an OEM tail light, this will work for you. I do want to note if you do have one of our TST Industries integrated tail lights for this bike, these tail lights, as you can see, are radically restyled for a nicer fit and finish on the bike, but they also carry a programming button that enables you access via the press of a button, still accessible via the trunk compartment anytime you want to. You can change the modes on this light and all of the functions that are contained on the brake light modulator are already built into this light, as well as integrated signals and plug and play ability and easy installation. All that stuff is really just, it comes to you, bam, ready to go. So if you already have one of these, the brake light modulator will be redundant. If you don't, maybe you'll consider buying that instead of this part. Anyway, let's get going with the installation of this part. I'll stop yapping and start turning some wrenches. Let's ditch the seats off the bike. On this particular bike, it's not too, too easy to ditch the front seat. So we'll go in sequence here. I'm gonna grab a four millimeter Allen. We'll need to remove a couple fasteners here. One, two, three, four. We're leaving these intact because this panel does not have to come out. Now we will need to open up this panel and also this panel just off to the side to gain access to the screws that hold the front seat on. I will not be removing the entire panel off the bike. I will just be popping it off enough to gain access. This just makes it a little bit easier to do this entire disassembly. Here I'm using a spring puller to pull down on this panel here 
unlock it. You can do it with just fingers, but I do like to have a tool available for this. As you can see, this fairing was previously cracked. So I wanna be very gentle with it. Here you can see the tab that goes under this fairing and has interference fit. And there is a friction fastener that fits into a grommet here. So this first has to get flexed out of the way and pulled out. And then this releases straight out perpendicular to the center plane of the bike. Up the line here, we have a number of mushroom head fasteners, kind of like Velcro, just a little bit stronger. And then a friction fastener, just like this one up in this location. So that just pulls away. You see the mushroom head here. Once those disengage, now we have enough room to wiggle this out of the way and get our four millimeter Allen into here and remove that screw that holds our front seat from the side here. Let's get that out. So now we repeat the procedure on the left side of the bike. Now the seat can be lifted off. We have access into here. We'll be removing this panel. Lift up on these ears here to clear these tabs and push this towards the rear. And that unlocks these sliding clips from these windows. This fairing has similar sliding clips that go into the under tray. And at this point, I believe it's only one push pin that is the final fastener we need to take out for the left side panel to come out. All right. We will. There we go. So here are two additional, actually three places where things need to slide out of. After you clear this clip from here, from this interference window, it unsnaps, pushes forward, comes off. And now we have access to our wiring. Your taillight connector should be somewhere in this area. It is a three conductor connector here. I'll just peel back on the boot a little bit to expose it. There is a locking tab in the center of this connector that needs to be pressed down to unlock the connector. Now we grab our vehicle specific harness for our brake light modulator. This comes to you plug and play. So that way you don't have to worry about how to configure it. It's basically the OEM plug, push it in until it clicks and then get your tail light connector in same fashion, click, and we get our brake light modulator in. And at this point, I'd like to quickly test the function, make sure that we don't get too, too far into the process without knowing for sure that we have function. And in fact, we do, so we can move ahead. So here, I would like to keep my original wiring where it was, maybe, perhaps use the boot to hide some of these wires, but I'm gonna need to select a better spot for the actual modulator. I do think I like the area inside this subframe here. Oh yeah, this area looks really good to me. It looks like it was made for this purpose. So I will grab one of the wire ties that was provided with the brake light modulator kit. I'd like to point out the channel that's been designed to the housing of the modulator for the purpose of tying it off to things, such as the subframe here. I'm going to configure this loosely, still allowing for some adjustability. And here I'm just showing how to configure this on the bike and how to tie it off. Obviously, I'm assuming that you guys already picked your selected mode of operation and also the speed of the effect that is shown to you in the video how to how to perform those modifications within there 
but you have to get them done before this step. So please make sure you watch the entire video and make your adjustments ahead of time. And come to this point, you'll need to perform these connections. Now, if you notice, I do have this housing pointed slanted downwards. Any incident water that may get into the trunk compartment will flow down and away from all the components here. And that's really what we want. We don't really want any accumulation of water going, trying to penetrate inside the housing. So let's point it with the rubber grommet down, wiring down, tie it off to the frame like this. I do like this here. Everything's looking smooth. So now basically I just need to figure out where to put all this bulk. At this point, this bike does not have signaling, signaling equipment plugged in. Otherwise there would be more wires coming out of there and it, they would bulk up here. So in your bike, it may look a little bit different. For that reason, I'm just gonna assume that you guys have a bunch of plugs in here and we can't fit any more in that boot. So I'm gonna distribute the bulk here on the side of the subframe and perhaps this wire can go down under these shrouds here. And this is looking really good. We're not producing any extra bulk here under this panel. I'm gonna cut off the excess here. And then I'm gonna move into the reassembly. So this is basically the reverse order of disassembly. quick note for you guys here on the reassembly of the front seat make sure you're looking at it because the screw that you're turning in actually has a shoulder on it and if you're not looking at what you're doing you can potentially clamp the plastic tab ear that this is supposed to go into you could clamp it with the shoulder and distort it so you, what you want to make sure is you get this shoulder inside the hole in the boss that's supposed to receive it before you actually start cranking down. After I clip this part in, I go up the line to get all the other fasteners seated on each side and those mushroom heads engaged. And then we just replace the remainder of the screws we took out from the back here. As you can see, I'm not using a power tool to put them back in. Most of these components fit together with rubber well nuts. You will not experience a hard bottom. When you try to bottom out this screw, make sure you do not over tighten them. They expand the rubber well nut in a mushroom fashion. And that's what holds it all together. So do not over tighten these. And that is pretty much all there is to it. I'm gonna replace the seat. And that's it, we're done. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from their receiving threads and leave them in the cap Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector, and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes with the brake pressed. Press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program. 
Press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise and that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is pulsar and this one just keeps on flashing so I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you want to explore the next mode, we have the intermittent pulsar. This one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you decided to keep it, and you're good to go.